morning. We're going to go ahead and open in prayer and uh, see what the Lord has for us today. Amen. So, Lord, we just thank you yes, once Lord. again, Lord. Thank you. For who you are, Lord God, the lover of our souls. Yes, Lord. Thank Father, you made a way for us, Lord God. And you said that we are to gather together, Lord, to hear from you, Lord God. Yes. So we thank you, Lord, for your word this day. Yes. All over this world, Lord God, people are preaching your word. Yes. And pray that you will bless the reading of your word. Yes. And Father, we just lift up everybody here, Lord. Yes, Lord. And we ask that you would bless them, Lord God. Yes. And we those that aren't here, Lord, we ask you would bless them on their way. Yes. And Father, we thank you, Lord God. We have much to be thankful for, Lord God. Yes. So we just want to say... We love you, we appreciate you, Lord God, and we expect to hear from you this morning and apply it to our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, good morning, everybody. It's good to see you. It's a nice, crisp morning out there. Nice and sunny. October is here already. Or September. Of course, the month shouldn't matter to us. Hi. Uh, shouldn't matter to us much. We're still doing the work. This is Sunday morning, right? Amen. Looks like a Wednesday night for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe I just noticed, I don't know, the sun is up, so people know it's morning and daytime. All right, well, none of that matters. Listen, uh, as far as prayer and things, Keep praying about uh, what's going on in Israel with the war going on there. Amen. Uh, they're fighting on so many fronts. There's threats now against all kinds of Jewish activity and so on, even here in the States. If you haven't seen, there's churches being burned in Canada. Uh, we're praying for God's protection in all this, and we still have the hope of Christ in everything that goes on. We know our government needs prayer, our elections need prayer, our families need prayer, our schools need prayer. We need the gospel to infiltrate all of these places and we need to be the light in the midst of the dark areas out here where it looks like evil could prevail. But we know if it does look like it prevails, it's only for a season. Amen. Because God is not mocked and the Bible says as a man sows that will he reap. Right? Amen. And so we trust in the Lord in all these things, and we don't have to lose hope. And listen, if I preach the biggest glo uh, doomsday message in the world I can muster up, you should not lose hope. Amen. Not that I'm going to try to do that, but some people think if you just tell the truth of the gospel and what Jesus said is going to happen, you're preaching doomsday or you're, you're depressed and you can't see the bright side of things, and that's not true whatsoever. <laughs> In the midst of all of this, people are coming to Christ. They're repenting of their sins. They're Amen. turning their lives around. They're being changed and transformed just like you and I when we were younger or maybe not so long ago. And we were changed and the Lord's doing that now. And he's going to do it right up until we hear that shout. Amen. The sound of a trumpet. Amen. People are still going to be coming to Christ all the time in all this. And so we've got to be faithful to what we've been called to do and what God has given us to do. And so today I want to go into a little bit more of what we talked about on Wednesday night as far as sanctification. Um, and it may repeat a little bit of what I said on Wednesday night, but I think we need to hear more and more all the time because you and I are to be set apart for the service of God. Amen. You were called out of this world, and I'll give you scripture to all that. Uh, you were chosen, just like you can go read about Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 1, how God uh, chose him before he found, formed him in the womb, and how he sanctified him and set him apart to be a prophet to the nations, right? And we say, wow, Jeremiah. But listen, you and I, Jesus said... To the disciples, you've not chosen me, I have chosen you. Whenever somebody chooses you to be in something or on some board or some team or some group, they've separated you from everybody else that was there to be chosen from. And that's what sanctification means. Jesus tells us in John, not only have I uh, sanctified them through the word or through the truth, and your word is truth, but Jesus said, I sanctify myself. And so you and I have been given power in Jesus' name 
to overcome the world, to sanctify ourselves from the mindset of the world, from the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, all the things the world says are glamorous and glorious. He's given us the power to sanctify ourselves, set ourselves apart from that through the power of this gospel. And every time we read in here, it's going to say, and the word. Because the word is sharper than any two-edged sword, the Bible says, right? Cutting asunder to the soul. The soul is what works in this world with all these things. So, uh, cutting asunder the soul and the spirit. Because the spirit walks in truth. The spirit obeys truth. The spirit follows the Lord. Our spirit being built up and ministered to by the Spirit of God. And this is the church. This is who we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to blend into the world. This thing of everybody trying to look like the world now and tattooed up like the world so I can win the world. Yeah, Paul said I'm all things to all people, but he didn't go sleeping around with people's wives so he could win people that slept around with people's wives. He didn't go in the pig slop with the pigs like the Bible says. Don't cast your pearls among the swine. These are holy things of God that we work with. And we're to come out and be separate, right? Touch Amen. not, taste not, handle not. Doesn't mean we're alienated from everything out here. We still communicate. We still do business with. We still minister to. We still go to family gatherings where there's some believers and non-believers but we don't intermingle in what they do because Jesus didn't intermingle in what they did. We stay separate of all of that. This is sanctification. So everybody's telling other people, go be like them so you can win them to the Lord. How many times I've shared with a young lady that got saved in a campus ministry type thing and she was out drinking with us all the time and she said, well, I wanted to be able to talk to you guys. And I said, well, you shouldn't be out here drinking with us. I wasn't saved. I didn't know anything about the Bible. But I don't think you're supposed to be doing this with us. And then later she came to church here and went on to be stronger in the Lord and everything else. Amen? Amen. I'm talking back in the 1970s. <laughs> A lot of people don't even know about those days. Amen. Or the 60s when the revolutions were going on and everything was in an upheaval back then. And, you know, everybody, we were seeking the truth. Now people think they have the truth because they've been in school, they've been in college. Well, that is the truth. No, that's not the truth. That's why all through this Bible he says about the word and sanctification. Sanctify him with thy truth, and thy word is truth. Uh, and through the word, and the word, and the preaching of the gospel, and the teaching of the cross, and that without Christ we have no hope, no life within us whatsoever. Amen. About creation, about resurrection, about eternal life, about being sanctified. Because without holiness, doesn't the Bible say no man can see the Lord? Who's preaching holiness anymore? Shared with you about our friend that had a church and got all these people coming. He was so excited and then he decided to preach on holiness. Everybody left. They don't want to hear holiness. They want to hear I can go to heaven and Jesus loves me. The way a lot of people are saying, just the way you are. But he doesn't let you stay the way you are. No. If you really get close to him, if you really love him. Amen. Amen. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 22 through 24. You'll remember that, uh, well, most of you will remember that this is a list that is spoken here. It talks about uh, warn the unruly, you know, comfort the feeble, don't render evil for evil, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, Quench not the spirit, don't despise prophesyings, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. When I minister and talk to these kids at the schools, I tell them, listen, here's my 
card with my number on there, you can text me, but don't call me. I won't answer if you call. If you text me, I'll text you back. So there's a record of what was said and what's going on. Uh, I do that all the time. And so that's what I get. I get texts. I won't answer if they call. Uh, and, you know, I probably should do that with more things just to be separate of that type of thing. And so there's no place for accusation. Uh, so it says, abstain from all appearance of evil. So he's given us a list of things to do and not to do here in the scripture. And he's telling us if we walk like this, in verse 23, the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. If we'll be mindful of what the Lord has set us apart to do, if Jeremiah lost sight of what God uh, said that I formed you in the womb to do, uh, that's a terrible thing. That's forgetting who you are. So he says, abstain from all appearance of evil along with these other things. In other words, try to not let anything look like you're involved in anything evil uh, or anything that can be misconstrued. Uh, a while back, I was having some uh, posters made and I was downtown here and I said, uh, you might remember this, some of you, uh, I'm thinking it was in the summertime if I remember right, but uh, I was going to the place that does the printing and I have a cousin who worked at a place, uh, a female cousin who worked at a place right behind there and she happened to be at the printing shop She's out front leaning on a telephone pole like this when I come walking up. That can look bad in the first place, right? And she's married and everything else. Uh, anyway, she saw me and she came over and hugged me. Now she's my cousin. But the first thing I did is I went like that real quick after I let her hug me for a second because what in the world will this look like? Some girl leaning up a tel against a telephone pole out in front of a business and I come walking up and hug her. <laughs> and we're right across from the place where the city offices are now. Yeah. And I know a lot of those folks. So uh, real quickly, I said, hey, it's great to see you and so on. And she kind of noticed that I like pushed her back a little bit. But I said, you know, I, I don't want to do this out in public like that, uh, whatever, anyhow. Uh, appearances of evil or when you're hanging out places all the time it's like when I was younger in the Lord I wouldn't go in some of these restaurants that had the bar because I didn't want think, people to think I was going back to drinking again I wanted them to know I was out of all that so then when we did go in there if there was two rooms one with the bar and the other side we would always go sit on the other side abstain from all appearances of evil and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly and I pray God your whole spirit soul and body a lot of people think they aren't answerable for what goes on in their body but the Bible definitely says you are when you throw your body out there for people to abuse or uh, sexual relationships or any of that type of thing you're going to count to God for that so your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The God of peace <clears throat> sanctify you wholly. We talked about truth in the inward part, Psalm 51. Uh, my children, are, I, I, I desire, I love to hear that my children walk in truth in the little Gospels of John or the little... Uh, letters of John there at the end. Uh, the Lord wants us to have the truth abiding in us, right? We're yeah. to have the word of God dwelling <coughs> richly in us. That's the word of truth. Amen. We're to abound in this. We're to know the fiery darts of the enemy. We're to know uh, the snares of the enemy, the trappings of the enemy. We're to be aware because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in us who warns us of all things, right? And he reveals things. And so we're to be attentive to all of this. And the God of peace sanctify you wholly. That means every part of us. We can't have dark areas. 
Uh, we're talking about a little bit about all these folks and everything's a deliverance, a deliverance, a deliverance. Listen, you and I who are in Christ Jesus, uh, there's only one throne. And there's only one that can sit on the throne. If, it, if Christ is on the throne of your life, there's no other thing that can dwell there. Amen. No evil, no darkness. Now you may be troubled with things. You may open doors to things. Uh, I don't know how many of you remember years and years ago, I was preaching a message and I got to the part where I said that the Lord searches the hearts and he tries the reins. And a lady sitting right over there jumped up a little bit and started screaming out and here she had gotten into some unclean things and opened some doors in her life and she did need set free from that but she wasn't possessed it wasn't a deliverance like we talk about what we're seeing today and if you listen to some of these folks that teach on uh witchcraft new age um new thought and there's a couple other areas there the enlightenment, enlightenment that we talked about just two weeks ago, uh, the teach on these things, they will teach you that in the satanic realms, they want everybody to think they have devils because most people will never get out of that. And so you've opened the door because you fear this thing and now you let devils in and now, hey, all us witches are happy because that's what we're praying. And that's why years ago I said, you know what? We have things going on in the church when we don't know somebody, we want to know where they're coming from. We want to know what you've been around, what you've been into, because we want to make sure you haven't been in any of that stuff and that you're not, you know, like now uh, people walk in and they want to bring stuff down and they want to infiltrate things and, and, you know, put people in bondage and wing them and take them off somewhere and so on. And you know what? That's what the shepherd's supposed to be watching over. But somewhere along the line, the shepherds have gotten the attitude because of a lot of people pushing a lot of things that, well, they're going to come and go as they please. Well, what shepherd says that about his sheep? What cattle farmer says, well, the cows come and go as they please. If they go in his yard over there and he keeps them and slaughters them, oh, well, that's fine. No, because that's their possession. That's their prize. That's their wealth and prosperity and so on. <coughs> For us, it's none of that. It's serving the Lord. It's being obedient to God. It's watching out because he's given us that charge and to do these things. And so nobody is like in submit, submission to me in a sense, but you're in submission to the word of God Amen. and the authority of what God does. Abstain from all appearance of evil and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. That means lying and cheating and deceiving and uh, backbiting and speaking evil and gossiping and whispering about things and manipulating people and putting them under your wing and so on. Uh, all that stuff's got to come out and go. All of that's got to be delivered out of your life, not in a major deliverance. You have the power to do that, right? The Bible says having renounced the hidden things. That means you and I have the power to say, I'm realizing I'm lying again and I need to renounce this thing and get it out of my life because Christ is Lord of my life and claim the victory again. And listen, if we are in the times we think we're in, we need to be pure and purifying ourselves. We need to be getting holy like he is holy. And I remember men that mocked the thing of being holy. Well, you know, I'm holy and I live a holy life anyway. And wow. And then you go and do some things we saw you do. I pray, God, your whole spirit, because the Bible says we are to cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and the spirit. That means we can let dirt in our spirit. That's why a lot of times I might have mentioned this on Wednesday night when I, no, because it was on Friday, I wouldn't have said this on Wednesday, when I was with the school group here and we talked about the sower uh, the, the farmer who planted good seed and the servants came to him and said, what happened? You know, you heard me read this at the hayride, I think. What happened that, you know, you've got weeds in the midst of that now? We thought you used good seed. It's referring to God who created all things in perfect order and so on. And the enemy, he said, came in and must have done this while men slept. And so now we see corruption on every front and 
and defiling things. And so I told the young folks there, now listen, when you walk down the hall of the school, there are seeds of tares, weeds, being thrown at you all the time. When you hear their dirty conversations, when you go in the bathroom, as some of them have said, and we hear some of the most corrupt things, I said it's all trying to plant seeds in you of wickedness, of weeds, of don't do good, of follow us, of you need us to be your friends, that type of stuff. And I said, but the Lord didn't create you in that. And you can get through this. You need Christ stronger in your lives and you need to obey the word. And sometimes you need to sanctify yourself. You need to separate yourself. You need to set yourself apart for the Lord and for none of that stuff, although you're going to walk by it and you're going to hear it and everything else, you're mindful that you belong to Christ. He's my Lord and Savior. I have power over these thoughts. I quench these fiery darts of the enemy all the time. And these are 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds. Hopefully they'll get it. Hopefully they'll understand. And hopefully we'll understand. So may he preserve or sanctify wholly, completely, your spirit, which is the third part of us, right? We're created body, soul, and spirit. The spirit part of us is where God communicates with us. So if we're defiled in our spirit, our communication with God is going to be corrupted. It's going to be interfered with. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions. And in the world today, so many people are running in soul power. Their emotions are rampant. It doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong. It's how I feel about it or what I think it might do or how it might come out, even though we've had generation after generation after generation that proves it goes this way, I think it might go that way. And it never does. And your body, because people throw their bodies into things that they shouldn't, and we're to keep our bodies clean. I think I gave the example one time when it talks about what God forbade the people to do in markings and piercings, tattooings, and uh, going into the groves and cutting down a tree and decorating it all up or making it like an idol type thing, carving the images in the groves themselves like you uh, described totem poles and that type of thing, uh, that we were to do none of that. And now people go find a little part of the verbiage there and say, well, you have to be doing the, the cuttings to the dead. Well, you mean you think it's okay to cut your body as long as you don't have that mindset and where would that come from? And that's why people say abortion isn't really wrong because we're not really taking the babies and giving them to Moloch. That doesn't exist anymore. But you're doing the exact same thing. And even now there are people that are into witchcraft that they'll tell you we had babies for the very purpose of what we did with them. And you think like, my gosh, here we are. We are so accelerated and so excellent as people and so knowledgeable, but in reality, our knowledge hasn't saved anything Amen. because knowledge can't save. Knowledge puffs up, the Bible says, to where we think we're better than God, we're smarter than God, we know the way better, and so on. All of this is in sanctification, in being set apart. So listen, everybody, if you end up as this little group of people that we are, and you make it into the kingdom, praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, we want to share the gospel with anybody else that will listen. The Bible says that we have to love the truth in the end. It says those who love not the truth are the ones that are going to be strongly deceived and delusion is going to overtake them. And if we love the truth, we will not be deceived. Amen. Who's the truth? Jesus is the truth. The word of God is the truth. The word of God is what sanctifies us because like that two-edged sword, it cuts things away from us to sanctify us, to set us apart. So I pray, he says, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless under the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you. 
If you say, I don't know if I can do that, call on him because faithful is he that called you. Amen. He will work it out in you if you will yield to him. <coughs> Who also will do it. And in reality, listen, if one of us makes it into heaven, who got us there? Us? No way. It's all God and Jesus. Amen. It's all the power of his spoken word and what he declared and what he called us for and purposed us for in all of this to serve the Lord. So we read 1 Peter 3.14 uh, through 17, I think we did on Wednesday night. It talked about suffering. I referred back to Matthew chapter 5, if you're persecuted for righteousness sake and so on. Uh, if you suffer for righteousness sake, if you suffer because you're sanctified, if you suffer because you're set apart, if you suffer because you're chosen of God. Remember, Jesus said to the disciples, you've not chosen me in John 17. No, that wasn't John 17. He said, you've not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And so we take that as to all of us because he went on to pray about all those that would hear the gospel from that point on in John 17. If you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you and be not afraid of their terror. Why? Because in the end, the Lord is going to be with us. He will not forget our labors of love. He won't forget our work of righteousness. He won't forget what we've done in obedience to him. He never forgot Noah while Noah was trapped in the ark Amen. with all the animals and all sin was being wiped out. It says in, what is it? Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And then it says that God remembered Noah. He's the one who sealed him up, right? Amen. Listen, he says he set his seal upon us. We're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. If God has sealed us in this covenant relationship, in this sanctification, don't ever think God is going to forget us. That's why it's written in there. God remembered Noah. The first three words of the verse of the chapter, I think. And he'll remember us. If you suffer for righteousness sake, happy are you. Be not afraid of their terror. There's a lot of terror out there right now. Terrorism's on the rise. You've got now they're telling you it's all homeland terrorism. Uh, you know, forget all the foreigners and anything else or Islam and the jihadi warriors and all that type of stuff. The Houthis and the uh, Hezbollah. Uh, forget all of them. It's all going to be Americans now that lose control and lose their minds. Listen, this is all a hype. There are forces out here, their whole ideology is to take over the world is to wipe anybody out that won't come along with them and i've been warning you about all this stuff for years and years now trying to warn other people or tell other people pay attention to this stuff happy are you be not afraid of their terror neither be troubled didn't we read scripture here or, i don't know it's been a few weeks ago where the Lord said, when you see these things, be not troubled. Don't be worried about it. I told you it's going to happen. You're going to walk around some of it. You're going to see some of it. I've said so many times, the Bible tells us there's going to be a day when we're going to look for one of the days of the Son of Man and not see it. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Be strong in the Lord. In Ephesians 6.10, in the power of his might. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon the Lord in the early part of the day. And believe him, because he's the one like we just read. He's faithful. He's able to do it and will do it. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts in the midst of all of this. Sanctify the Lord in your hearts. Set him apart from everything else. Everything else you love and care about. Listen, the Lord's got to be first. He said that. It's the first commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, all your being, and so on. Uh, let him be Lord of, as he is. Watch and see what he'll do. Even today, if we, we talked about maybe praying with people and saying, you know, you want to be sanctified like the Bible's talking about, 
but will you really, or is there a fearfulness of that, that you say, well, God might make me do something I don't want to do? Like we used to say to our parents when we were little kids, well, God might tell me to give this up, or God might tell me I have to listen to him, or I have to follow that ministry. Well, let me ask you, when John saw Jesus, did John quibble with God about, God, are you going to make me give my disciples over to him? Because he's really preaching the gospel. He's a man of God. He's God in the flesh. He's the Messiah. He's the lamb who comes to take away the sin of the world. Are you going to make me submit to him now? He gladly said to his own disciples, you know, I'm just here as a friend of the bridegroom, but the bride belongs to the bridegroom. And when the bridegroom comes, he's the one who's going to stand in that place, not me. I must increase that he must decrease, or in, I must decrease that he may increase. Amen. All the word of God. And that's where we've got to get to. And so many people, I'll tell you, I talk to people lots of times. They'll go this far with God, but that's it. Well, if he says a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that. I said I was with somebody that a lot of folks know. And uh, I know he's known the Lord for a long time. But after a little bit of time with him, I went, my gosh. Complaint after complaint after complaint. Like, man, say something like, I believe the Lord will take care of all this. Say something. Uh-uh. That's a sad thing. Amen. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. And sometimes, listen, remember what we read on Wednesday night, and I don't remember exactly where we were, but oh, maybe it's in Matthew. Well, I'm not even going to try it. When, they, when Jesus went to Nazareth, was it Matthew 13? And they said, you know, we know his mother and his brothers, and this is Jesus, and he's here from here in Nazareth, and where did he get this knowledge, and where did he get this wisdom? And they resented him because, well, wait a minute, you're a man just like we are. You grew up right here in our town. What's the deal with you thinking you can come off like some spiritual person now, like you know the Torah, you know the scriptures, you know everything, and you've been with the Father God, and you think you're the Son of God, and all this stuff's going on? And how many times when that happens to you or me, we immediately shrink back? Well, if you're getting arrogant about that, you should shrink back. If you're getting arrogant about I'm the king and the priest, and you know, now, and like I said, my wife's the queen, and so honor her and that type of stuff, you need to shrink back. The Bible says we're kings and priests unto God, right? It does call us peculiar people, referring back to when he said to Israel, my peculiar treasure, which Wednesday night, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. I got a little demonstration I'll do about how valuable you are if you are really sanctified. See, there wasn't another Jeremiah. We'll talk about that on Wednesday night. There was only Jeremiah. There were other men that were called in ministry and prophets and so on, but they weren't Jeremiah. There was only one of him. There's only one of you. There's only one of me. And when we see what God has done in all this, it's a miraculous thing. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. That means let him be Lord. Let him rule, let him reign, let him live in there, let him operate through these vessels. We're vessels, right? My cup here, uh, if the water's good, the cup had nothing to do with it, right? It's just holding what good water was put in there. And when it quenches me, I don't say, oh, that's a beautiful cup. I say, that's good water. We need water. We don't need cups. Right? Because before cups, they drank with their hands. Amen. Or they drank from a running stream where they got down there and lapped. Or where it spilled over a little spillway where they could get under it. Like we do with a faucet outside at the house. Right? <laughs> but it's the water that's important. Amen. And the same thing with us when the Bible talks about the water or the word. Which it will talk about in sanctification here. Uh, we'll get to it in a minute. 
So sanctify the Lord God in your heart. Set him apart in your heart. Don't let anything else get the throne of your heart. As much as you love other things, make them always less. Make them always submitted to God. Make them always, Lord, you're the one that gives me the ability to even be around them or love them or have them. Our kids, God gave us the ability for our kids. Why would we worship our kids? As so many people do. They live their life totally for their kids. It's like their marriage can go to pot as long as the kids are okay. And that's not how it's supposed to be. It's all supposed to work together. Amen. And be ready to give answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So when there is trouble, as we talked about a little bit earlier, uh, when there is things that are going on in society and people look at you and see that you're not moved by it all, you're not believing the lie that's coming out about all these things. You seem to have a track that you're on, and it's the track of truth because it's the word of God. Um, somebody asked me about, uh, there's a rumor out there, I'll say, about some of these storms that they're being caused because of the wealth that's under the ground where these storms are happening. Um, Somebody said to me, well, do you really believe somebody could be that evil that they would let people die to get property? <laughs> let me ask you something. Who was King Ahab? And who was Jezebel? And why did God let that be in the scripture for us to learn something? What's the root of all evil? Money. The love of money, not money, the love of money. Because he says money answers all things. The love of money is the root of all evil. So the rumor was that there's all this lithium in the ground. Lithium is what's used to make electric batteries for these cars and everything, and all the lithium batteries that you know you use in all your appliance stuff, or little gadgets, or radios, or clocks, and things. And so I went and looked it up. Remember I told you I asked AI, uh, was Peter the first pope of the church? <laughs> and it said, Catholic tradition says, so now I don't know if I should trust it. Because I don't want to hear tradition, I want to hear truth. But then I asked it, so is there lithium in this area where this is being talked about? Oh yes. There's one of the greatest deposits of lithium in the world in that location. Then you got to go like, oh, gee, anything's possible. Not that I'm promoting anything or believing anything or thinking anything, but everything is possible. I guess if we say with God all things are possible, with the enemy all evil is possible. Amen. And you've heard me say for years, you don't understand how evil evil is and how dark darkness is because you've never been there. And pray to God that we are never there for any reason. Amen. So be ready to give reason to the hope that's in you with meekness and fear because that's how we're to share the gospel. And yes, there's times where we have to be a little more stern or stringent uh, and precise. Uh, there's times where we just have to speak with love. And there's times where we have to listen to people questioning because they're trying to find the truth and we're trying to walk them to the truth. Having a good conscience, <clears throat> and I said about the conscience, of course, our conscience, the Bible tells us through the water baptism, our conscience, we have a right conscience toward God because of water baptism. We're not saved by water baptism, but it clears our conscience with God. That whereas they speak evil of you, in other words, I can say, Lord, I'm doing all this for, for right, and let's show me if I'm doing something with the wrong motive or ulterior motives or something in me that I don't understand or comprehend. Show me because I want to have a right conscience in what I'm doing. 
Whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so. Is the will of God so? That means is his word true? Or his amen. promises, yea and amen, to all amen. who believe yes. them? That you suffer uh, for well-doing. It's better you suffer for well-doing than for evil doing. Amen. So if we have men that go to prison because they committed a crime, a robbery, uh, a rape, or whatever the case may be, they deserve prison. That's the recompense for what you do. But if they put you in prison because of doing good, like how many of you saw that some of these people are saying they were threatened when they went in in North Carolina and tried to help people. They were told they'd be arrested. Helicopters that were lifting people and had lifted people out of there and they're told, we'll arrest you, get out of the airspace. What in the world's going on? What's happening here? Listen, I've shared with you over and over the billions of dollars that have been spent to bring our nation down, to bring a globalization in they're not going to quit just because one man became president. Amen. And because there's groups of people that don't want this. They spent billions of dollars in this. And lots of them, it's their, their religion, basically. They're serving their God of whatever God of forces. The Bible talks about the man of sin, the Antichrist. The God of forces, whatever that really entails, they're going to bring about what they're going to bring about. And God's already told us it's going to happen. And yet he's going to save us out of it all. And that's our hope. So if you suffer, it's better you suffer for the will of God or doing the things of God and because of your good conversation in Christ. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's go to John 17. <clears throat> If anybody out there is listening, you're noticing I'm using the word of God because the word of God is the power of God. It's the truth of God. It's what changes us. I can tell stories and I try to relate it to things, of course, real life situations and things. But it's the word of God that's our power. John chapter 17, verse 14 through 19. Jesus said, I have given them thy word. He's talking. This is his prayer to the Father. I've given them thy word. What am I giving you? The word. Just like Jesus taught us to do. Just like it says in Timothy, when Paul said to Timothy, preach the word. I've given them thy word, and the world has hated them. Now, you know at this point in time, the world hadn't had time to hate them yet. Do you remember Jesus is still with them? He's not gone. They're not going out and preaching the gospel uh, after the uh, day of Pentecost and so on. They're still with Jesus. Yes, he sent them out like he sent out the 70, but they weren't hated as yet. But he's telling them or talking to God futuristically that here's what they're going to go through because he said if they hated me, they're going to hate you. Right? Amen. I've given them thy word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Are we of the world? Why did Jesus say to Peter, go down and get the coin out of the fish's mouth and pay the tax? He said, who did the kings of the earth collect tax from? And Peter said, well, from foreigners. And Jesus said, well, go down and get the coin out of the fish's mouth. What was he saying? We're foreigners to this world. The world hates us because we're foreigners to it. And they don't understand that, of course. And maybe some young babes in the Lord don't understand it. But we're foreigners to this world because our names are written in that book of life that Man, we talked God, about a couple Amen. weeks ago. Amen. Not written in the earth, what it talks about in the Old Testament. When Jesus knelt down there, when the Pharisees brought the woman in adultery and he knelt down and rode in the dirt and there's all kinds of questions, what did he write? He might have wrote their names because you're bound to this earth. And if you're bound to the earth and your name's written in the earth, 
when the purging of the earth comes, you're going to be burned up with it, is what it says. So he said, the world has hated them because they are not of this world, even as I am not of this world. <clears throat> we know Jesus came from the Father, right? Amen. The virgin birth, because the Holy Spirit moved on Mary, and the power of the highest came upon her. Verse 15 says, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. How many of you are praying for the rapture? Yeah. You're praying to be caught out of the world. Why are you praying that? You should be praying for God to keep you while you're in the world. Amen. Keep you till the end. Jesus said, I don't pray that you take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. Because they don't know how evil evil is. Amen. They don't know how dark darkness is. They don't know the trickery of the enemy. One good thing that came out with these young people on Friday, one of the guys said, uh, he's kind of a studious type guy. He said, I think too many people think the devil's dumb. <laughs> have we ever met any, any of those people? Uh, have we ever looked in the mirror? Like the devil can't trick me. I'm smarter than that. And so we had a long conversation from that point on about those type of things. It was really good. In fact, I know I said that. No, I couldn't have said this. Maybe I said it yesterday. They were walking down the hall, these two guys that were in the group, and I was behind them. They didn't know I was back there. And they said, I think this was the best one we've had yet. Because the whole time they actually put input and talked about stuff. And it was really good. <clears throat> I thought it was good myself. But they were doing it. So that thou shouldest keep them from evil. So listen, keep working. Keep walking. Keep being the light. Keep being the uh, salt wherever you're at. Keep preaching the word. Keep telling people you've got to get out of this. You better get yourself together here. You better make some changes. You better repent before the Lord. Because there's evil that's coming. Keep them from the evil. Keep us from the evil. Remember, he's talking about the men that were with him. He had already said, I lost none but the one, the son of perdition. And so now he's saying, keep the rest of these. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Why do people need to be in the ministry, in the fellowship? As many times as they hear it, it goes in one ear and out the other. I'm okay. Are you really? Uh, we never know when we're going to get attacked. Amen. Um, we pray about certain situations. All of a sudden, boom, an uprising. There it is. Okay, well, we've been praying about it, so... Let's go take care of it. Let's get it done. Been praying about it. We're going to keep believing the Lord. Let's go chop these things down. And let's walk in clarity here. Sanctify them through the truth. What does the truth do? What uh, Two weeks ago we talked about being so full of the truth that it drives everything else out. Right? You know, it's like when you have a garbage bag and you keep stuffing stuff in there and stuffing stuff in there and stuff and stuff in there, the other end pops open and it <laughs> pops out on the floor, right? Amen. Now you can stuff more stuff in there. You can't move <laughs> it anywhere, but you can keep stuff and stuff in there. And so all the stuff we have in us, the truth is pressing out of us all the time. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. So when we're in churches, that aren't really preaching the word. I mean, it's nice and it's friendly and they're, they're believers, no doubt. Don't doubt that whatsoever. But what are we doing here? If we got to have the word, which is the truth, being preached all the time to sanctify the people, then how many of us are really being sanctified when that's not going on? As thou hast said, sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. And 
for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Do you know how many times I personally have said, Lord, keep me, keep me clean because I don't want it to affect anybody else. I mean, I don't want to bring reproach on the church in any way. way. Help me to live above all this stuff yeah. in a godly sense, not a haughty, arrogant sense, but to be clean, to stay straight in, in your eyes and right in your eyes Amen. and not be defiled with things, not fall victim to some of this lying and deception and, deception and you, know, uh, you know, keeping my Italian heritage going when, you know, <laughs> What's that do for anybody? My Christian heritage, my Christian belief can save souls. My biblical belief. Amen. For their sakes, I sanctify myself. <clears throat> What's he mean? He's, he's, he's saying, I'm staying in the truth. I'm staying in your word. I'm staying in what you've given me, what you command me, what you speak through me. All these things. I sanctify myself. Everybody listen, you have the power in you if you're in Christ Jesus to sanctify yourself now. Every time you say, Lord, cleanse me, forgive me from that, you're sanctifying yourself from that. Sanctifying isn't the sanctified thing like we talked about Wednesday night where I've got my hair up and my gown down and no makeup or anything and I say, I'm blessed and sanctified and you better get out of my way. It's not that whatsoever. It's this heart condition. It's being clean in the eyes of the Lord. And I know so many people are saying, well, I'm clean. Are you really? Then how come you can't flow together? How come it's always on the outskirts? How come it's always a certain group that only you and them communicate and say, well, I'm a part of the body. Are you really? Think about that. When it's the little group all the time, and it's these people all the time, and it's that over there all the time. And yet, how many times I've said here in our own church, a lot of people, and I don't know, a lot of folks aren't here, but uh, do you talk to where we know each other anymore? Lots of you do, I know that, and I'm not reprimanding that whatsoever or reprimanding anybody. I'm saying, come on, the Lord has a lot more for you. Come around. You know where we're at. I say to people sometimes, you know, hey, can I talk to you about? No, no, I'm okay. Well, we go down the road, hey, well, no, I'm okay. Well, then one day it's like, geez, now we haven't talked about anything for all this time. I, why didn't you just say yes so we could talk about anything? To get to know you, to know where you're at, to know what's going on. Because if we are facing times that are going to get kind of ugly, don't you want to be able to trust each other? Amen, yes. You want to know somebody's heart? You know, we can't really know their heart, but you know you can know each other by how you pray. Amen. What you cry out for, what you're believing for, some of the situations you face, a little bit of your testimony. Some people haven't heard anybody pray. Some people haven't heard anybody's testimony. They don't know anything about where you came from before. And that's how we get to know each other in the body of Christ, how we can cover each other, pray for each other. You're going through something with your family? Don't be ashamed to say so. It's not your fault. We'll pray. Amen. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. And for their sakes... For those men's sakes, and for all of our sakes, he sanctified himself. Why? He was going to the cross. He had to be a perfect sacrifice. Think about that. If we're all dirty and dingy in the end, is the Lord going to pick us up? I don't know. If we're a bride that's all drug in the dirt and been around with other people and so on, are we getting to go? I don't know. That's why we need to make our calling and election sure. That's why we need to be worthy of the Lord. We need to walk in this worthiness. So for their sakes I sanctify, my, sanctify myself uh, that they also might be sanctified 
through thy truth. What's he saying? By me sanctifying myself, by my going to the cross as the Lamb of God without spot or blemish, they're going to be sanctified. That's all of us. That they also might be sanctified through the truth. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 27. I don't know why my cook keeps doing this, but it's irritating me. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27 says, Husbands, love your wives. And of course, it was going through a little bit there about the husband-wife relationship and so on. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That's why he needed to be sanctified. That's why he sanctified himself. He was going to give himself for the church. That he might sanctify and cleanse it. That's us now. That's all who come into the church, the body of Christ. The church not being the building. The church being the people of God. The church being those who are called out, that are sanctified, set apart, the Bible says he knows them that are his, his own. Uh, so in the end, when the church is caught away, listen, a lot of people that are thinking they're going to be a part of all that, if they're not sanctified like this, cleansed, like he's saying here, they're not going to make it in that time. That's why this has got to be preached and taught and people have to be mindful of Listen, uh, how many of us know people? I had an uncle that for years and years had nothing to do with any of his family. I said about how I was shocked he came to my wedding when I got married uh, because they had attitudes about this and attitudes about that and the wife was mad at this relative and that relative and so on and all those things went on and on and on and then they're gone. They passed like that. Never know anything of them changing or anything else. And so I would meet with some of their sons and daughters and they'd start talking about their parents. And I'd say, well, listen, we don't know what happened to your parents that made them like that. I don't know what happened to my father. My father was pretty rude and mean. I don't know what, well, I didn't know then what happened to him. I found out later that when he was a young man, he was told he only had 10 years to live. He was going to die of a heart attack. So he lived into his 50s, but he was mean for 30 years because he knew he could die at any time. So when you find that out about people, you kind of deal with them a little bit differently. You realize, listen, we've got to help them see the other side of this. Now, I don't know if my father passed as a believer or not, but you know what? I can't do a thing about that. All I can do is say, Lord, that's all in your hands. I know you're good and just. Amen. I know people witness to him. If he accepted and listened, he could be with you. It would be amazing and shocking to me. But I'm not going to be amazed or shocked if I get there then anyway, because I'm not going to remember any of this stuff, and neither are you. It's all going to be totally different. He says he's going to make all things new. That Amen. means you're not going to remember the trouble some person gave you or that that person owed you money or this person was your neighbor and they threw eggs on your house all the time you're not going to remember any of that stuff you're going to be in the presence of the glory of god, god the presence of god that wipes all that stuff out he said there's going to be no sorrow right no weeping no tears that means what's going to bother you it's not going to be like this we're not all going to get together and walk to the fire camp and roast marshmallows and that kind of stuff. I don't think marshmallows would be allowed in heaven. It's all corrupt stuff, food, that's tainted with all kinds of things. And you know what's sad? People don't want to hear that. They want to hear, no, it's going to be the way we think. We're going to go out in the boat and fish. And that's what we're going to do all day long. We're going to cast and reel and, you know, them bobbers and sinkers and white bass in heaven. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's white bass. <laughs> or muskies. How many of you ever went musky fishing where you have to take a rod or something and beat them when you get them to the boat? <laughs> Otherwise, they'll kick and fight for hours. <laughs> that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Sometimes that's what we have to do with some people we bring in church. Is that what you said? 
I thought I heard that. <laughs> Please don't anybody take that serious. I know how things get started. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Amen. Right now, this word, if you're allowing it, you know, you could put your hands up and stop people from throwing water on you. You can put your hands up and stop the word from having any effect. You can plug your ears. You can do lots of things. We all can at different times. The washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself. Jesus is going to present the church to himself. A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. I look at my own self sometimes, going to be 70 years old, and I say, I still got a blemish popping up. <laughs> like, goodness gracious, you're supposed to have clear skin by now, right? <laughs> and some kind of thing. Uh, anyway, but just as an example of some of that stuff, he's saying that he is going to cleanse and sanctify by the washing of work of the water by the word to present himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish so listen jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 you can go there and look this up yourself but when god called jeremiah when jeremiah was told before I formed thee in the womb I knew thee uh, and I've sanctified you and set you for a purpose and so on um, you can read in Acts chapter 9 where it talks about Paul you remember Paul on the road to Damascus who was Saul at the time and it says there that I have a chosen vessel here when uh, was asked, you know, saying to God, God, I've heard about Paul and so on, and you sure you want me to do this? God said, he's a chosen vessel. Chosen means separated. That means out of a group of men, he chose Saul, separated him, sanctified him from the rest. The disciples, he said, in uh, John 15, 16, I believe it is, about I've not chosen, or you've not chosen me, but I've chosen you, means I've separated you from among all these other people to be my disciples, to walk with me, to follow me, to obey me, to be blessed by me, to dwell with me for eternity. All of these things separated from everybody else, sanctified. And then he said, remember, he said, I have the power to sanctify myself and you and I have the power to separate ourselves from the things of the world bondages fears uh, you know enticements entanglements all that kind of stuff so I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to say listen if there's anybody this morning uh, of the ministry church that you want to know that you're sanctified before the Lord set apart and I know, listen, this is going to be a fearful thing in a sense. I'm not going to pray anything dramatic. I'm just going to anoint you with oil. And you're going to do it between you and the Lord. Amen. And as much as you'll allow him to do in your life, uh, to set you apart, to change what you're doing, you may think you're doing just fine. And you know what? Tomorrow morning you may wake up and the Lord has spoken to you and said, you are going to stop doing this from now on. Or from this point on, here's what I want you to do. And so, you know, the Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. Are you willing to do that Amen. and trust him? Because I'm going to pray over myself, too. Amen. And I know that could mean some things just like for anybody else that I have to change or I have to start doing more of. And so in all of this... Remember, he blesses those that are of a willing heart. Amen. Amen. So I'm not going to say everybody, if you don't feel like you want to be a part of this or come up for this, don't do it. 
It's not a problem whatsoever, and I'm not going to look down on anybody or say anything about anybody um, in that kind of a sense, because I want you to do exactly what the Bible says. Count the costs of what you're doing here. I'm not going to ask you to do anything more or less than ever before, but between you and the Lord, the Lord may have something for you. So if you want to come up, come up, and I'm going to pray with you. If you want to, go ahead and just put that song on while we're doing this. Let's, let's take a couple minutes here and just worship the Lord. Father, we give you praise and glory this morning because you are God. Yes, We thank you for your mercy and grace, and thank you that you're sanctifying us, setting us apart from many in the world, many, maybe even that name the name of Jesus that we don't know about, but that you're going to do a good work in every one of our lives. We thank you for it and give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise you.